Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at creating a journal spread in the Dina Wakeley Small Journal. So I'm working on the cotton rag paper and a burlap paper. Now on the cotton rag I'm just putting a really, really thin coat of gesso. In fact I'm just using white paint. On the burlap I've actually pre-prepared that and it's got um, a layer of collage medium and a the inside piece of a tissue, so just the white tissue glued down and you can see it goes almost translucent. The reason I do this is I really struggle with the open weave of the burlap and by putting that tissue over it, it just fills up those gaps so the paint will stay almost on the surface but you've still got that amazing texture to play with. And you can see it's still translucent if you want that translucent feel because uh, you could see the dye spray from the page before. So once I've prepped my pages, I haven't let it dry, I'm going straight back in with the Dina Wakeley paints and I'm using fuchsia in this page. Now I have no idea of what I'm doing on this page, I just wanted to get paint down. I just had that sort of feeling that day that I really needed to paint. So I put the fuchsia down and it turned a bit pink for me. So I went back in with straight fuchsia and used my fingers and I ended up using my fingers for most of this spread. Going back in with some lemon of the Dina Wakeley paint. In fact, I think most things on this page are all Dina Wakeley uh, media. So just rubbing in the, the lemon paint and going back in with a little bit of darkness with the eggplant. And you can see the eggplant and the fuchsia are almost the same colour. The eggplant's just slightly deeper colour, um, but the, they really work well together. Finally, I want to bring some darkness into the page, and I'm using the night navy blue paint. It's a really great dark neutral without being black, and it works really, really well with the pinky purpley tones of the page because it has an almost purple undertone to the, the blue colour. As I'm working along, just to help the paint spread more easily, you can see I'm spraying it with water. The um, heavy body paints stand up really well, are, are so pigmented that you can get them almost like a watercolour and they still stay very, very pigmented. So it's a great way to get them to move around the page to where you need them to be. Now, I don't mind having the, that it's not all mixed in. You can see on the left hand side page that you can sort of see the different or the finger marks of where I've been using the paint and that's okay, I want that texture within the page. And even um, on the right side page you can see some of those figures that I painted in the background sort of coming through. That's fine, this is just my background getting some colour down on the page. Now I decided that I wanted to do some layering on this. So I've got my background and I pulled out one of my, uh, I think it's a crafter's workshop um, stencil and I'm going in again not with a black but with uh, the, the night colour in the, um, not acrylic paint, sorry, the night colour in the archival inks. Now this is a specialty pad put out by Ranger with four of Dina's paint colours in the archival inks and it's a really handy one to have because I don't have a navy blue um, permanent ink and you can see it's just soft and it sort of fills in the background. Later on you'll see I'll put some black over the top and you can see the contrast between using that blue and having the black on it. Now I'm just going through and finding some stencils and again using the colour palette that I have, I'm using the red to do these medieval crosses. I actually really love this stencil and I think it's because it's got a variety of different sizes on it so you can sort of look like you've got some movement within the stencil. All this stenciling is quite subtle and that's what I want it to be. Just sort of giving some interest to the background but not overtaking. However with the yellow that I'm about to use for the stars I wanted that to stay in the foreground. So what I'm using is actually I'm going to stencil with the acrylic paint and I'm mixing cheddar and the lemon and using my blending tool to pounce it over the top just so I can get um, some opacity to the paint and to block out some of that background and just get, bring some brightness back into the page again because it was starting to look a little dull. Again with this stencil I think the reason I really like it, it's not a stencil I would usually ever think about but 
because of the variety of sides in it, you can sort of get that shooting star thing happening. Now in the background I'm working on uh, the Tim Holtz glass mat and I found this is amazing for doing this sort of technique. Just putting my paint on, using it up and then wiping it off and it looks really, really good in the end. So this is a foam stamp. So I've sprayed out my fuchsia ink, or paint, sorry, and then I'm just stamping it in. And now just with the leftover paint I've got, I'm just going to put it into the background to again add some layers up. When I finish doing this, I'm flipping to see if there's a page I want to put the extra ink on. So I decided to go to my Use It Up journal, which already had some ink on the page. I've just put my brayer in to clean that off, and then I'm going to get some stamps and stamp off the extra ink or paint into that journal. So that would be another journal page sometime in the future, and I've already got sort of a background happening there. As you can see, because I'm putting on the paint fairly thin, I don't need to wait all that long for it to dry. I do hit it with a heat gun um, briefly, but it doesn't really need all that much. It's drying really, really quickly because there's just thin layers of paint going over the top. So for this stencil, I'm using the black gesso, and again, I'm using my blending tool. Now, I, you saw I changed my blending tool. The first tool I had, the paint had actually dried on it, so it was a very hard surface, and it wasn't letting the paint pounce through the stencil. You do need to have some softness to your uh, sponge when you stencil, um, otherwise you are going to get lumps of paint going through. So this is the contrast between that navy in the background and the black over the top. So you can sort of see the navy blends in with the background, whereas the black sort of stands on top and really pops. What I'm doing now is using this Stabilo Oil Pencil and just extending the lines of that face stencil to the edges of the page. So it looks like it's not floating in the middle of the page. And this stencil is really good for that because the lines are already there for you. So even if you don't draw, um, you can just extend out the lines and connect them to the edges of the page. I really liked what I was doing here and as I was doing it, I suppose I had lots of thoughts going through my head. Um, first thought was it really reminded me of sort of the Stars and Stripes American flag, which is particularly odd to me because that's not something I would ever go for um, but I suppose because I've been listening to a lot of news at the moment that's probably first and foremost in my mind. Then I was sort of thinking that sort of got me thinking about politics in Australia and what's sort of been happening here and particularly today but sort of that being patriotic um, being happy or unhappy with some of the things that are happening. So that was sort of going through my head and then I was sort of thinking, well, what does that mean for me? What do I have to do? So that's where I sort of came around to. It was a really convoluted conversation I was having in my head. And I just found this stencil from Stencil Girl, which had lots of different words on it. So I decided to go with this and sort of make it into uh, a positive self-talk, this is what you want to be. Um, so what I'm doing is using my washi tape and just masking off the other words so I don't get the ink through them. And you can see with the first B that I did, I put too much paint on my um, blending tool. But the great thing about working with acrylic is if you're working on a dried surface, you can just wipe it off and then start again. So I'm just using, um, reusing the washi, pulling it off, masking off another word and going back in with it. So again, I was looking at the words that were on the stencil, but I was choosing words that spoke to me. So I've got be present, be fearless, be calm, be strong and vulnerable, make it count. And then on the other page, I end up writing choose hope. I really liked how these this stencil worked and it's such a flexible stencil that you can do this, you can mask things off to, to get individual words or you could just use the whole stencil in the background. So as I was doing this, um, it was making me think a lot about why I art journal as well. I went into my art room just needing to do something to get some paint down on the page. And by the time I got sort of up to this bit, it was making me feel 
by choosing the words and choosing the message, it was me telling myself I needed to do these things. And that's what I art journal for. I art journal as a form of relaxation. I art journal to get all my frustrations out. And sometimes the art on the page actually tells me how I'm feeling and that I need to do something about it. So it was funny, I took my journals to someone, someone asked to see my journals and one of the things they said as they went through it, oh they're really dark, it's all really dark and it really bugged me. I was really, really annoyed about it because one of the things that I see in my art journals is that I've been using a lot more rainbow colours. I've been using yellows and pinks and lime greens and oranges, colours that I've never really used before um, in my artwork. And I've been thinking, oh yeah, you know, they're looking really happy and you're using all these fabulous colours. And I realised that maybe that's, it's just a matter of focus. For me, I've moved beyond looking at the dark colours and been looking at the bright colours. The yellow on this page really pops for me. It's, it, what's, it's what draws my focus. Even though there's some dark on the page, the yellow is what draws my focus. And I think that's what it's all about. You know, we've always got that combination of darkness and light in life, in art, in whatever we do. It's what you choose to focus on. So. That's sort of where I was, I was coming from when I was making this page. So it was quite a cathartic page in the end. For someone who just went in and wanted to put paint down, it kind of ended up being quite cathartic. Um, I'm using my white Stabilo Oil pencil. Now, I've had real str struggles using that pencil before, but it actually worked beautifully on this page and better than my paint pens. So I was really, really happy about that because it's such a buttery pencil, like the black, it worked really, really well. So this is the end journal. I hope you enjoyed how it went together and I hope you enjoyed my thought process behind it. If you enjoyed watching this, please hit subscribe to my channel and you'll see when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.